So I have an update on my uh, Lee Auto Breach Lock Pro. Um, I still haven't got my bullet order in yet or my bullet feeders. Uh, it, it's on back order, unfortunately. Uh, so I decided to go ahead and decap a good portion of my brass in preparation. And uh, as you can see, over the past three days, I have managed to get through... I don't know, between 12 and 1500 rounds of brass. Uh, but I did discover something. Um, I am very glad that uh, I bought this Lee die set now uh, for this decapping die. Um, I do imagine that if I had a, a different brand die with a screw adjusted decapping pin, I probably wouldn't have experienced this issue, but um, I'd say this is a bit of a safety measure uh, for myself, just to prevent any any problems. Um, so the problem that I discovered was actually related to uh, some of the brass that I have, and it just so happens that I have one of the problem childs here in my hand. This problem that I experienced only came up in one brand of ammunition, of one, one brand of brass, uh, and it was all Winchester factory. Uh, now the problem I came up, that I experienced, uh, was in the decapping process, where as I was operating the press, I'd go to decap it, and I'd get it fully depressed, and I would, uh, I wasn't paying attention to this decapping pin, and I really needed to be, because what was happening was that the primers in the Winchester brass were getting partially pushed out. Uh, I'd say, I don't know, three quarters of the way. So here's an example of the primers. Um, these two uh, came out just fine. You can see, still see they've got the, the striker indentation for the card. But take a look at these four. Now these are some of the more mild uh, examples that I have. And you can see that the primer strike points are pretty much pushed back out. And in one case, that primer is seriously deformed. Um, let me see if I can get uh, a better view here for you. So yeah, see how that's turned kind of conical? Well, in some of the most severe cases, uh, I think I had like four or five of them, uh, that was actually stretched out and elongated by, I don't know, probably one or two millimeters and that would cause the primer to lock uh, the shell casing into the shell plate. So what was happening was the primer was getting, uh, wasn't getting fully ejected out the bottom, and it basically would lock the shell into place as it cy would cycle around cycle that around so it get to the number four position on the on the shell plate location and as I would bring it down there's a lip on the carrier right here and so what that primer is doing is instead of allowing the shell to pop out it was actually locking the shell in place because of that lip and so it would keep trying to cycle around and it was impacting the uh, the case ejector arm right here and it would just start it would pop the uh, case ejector arm out of the little locking cup right here and it would just start pushing it around and around and around and of course once the shell cycles back to the number one position the case feeder is trying to feed another case in and there's already something there uh, as you can see 
I'm going to pull this off of here. My case ejector arm now has this nice little chunk uh, divot taken out of it from a piece of brass that uh, the spent primer didn't fully get popped out. Now, what I was mentioning about the, uh, the decapping die here is that when that would happen, I would watch the, de the pin raise up maybe two millimeters or so. You know, not not fully uh, out the out the top like you would expect with a uh, Burdan primed case or primped primer, um, but it would be just enough, and it and it's noticeable as long as you're watching for it. It's kind of tough because you have to divert your attention between the case feeder down here and the the decapping pin up top. Um, being that this is a collet and not a uh, threaded depth adjustment on the pin, you can't really tight, keep tightening this thing down over and over again because you'll start you'll either start scoring up the pin so it doesn't grip, or you'll strip it out. Um, these are you know it's a carbide die and a steel collet, so hopefully you're not stripping this out anytime soon. Um, so that just leaves scoring the pin. Well, uh, what I did was I actually left this a little bit, uh, you know, got it down tight and then, and then gave it another quarter turn just for some resistance uh, so that it didn't pop up on every piece of brass. But when it did pop up, uh, my solution actually was this. <laughs> nice cheap little six inch ball peen hammer. So I'd run the, run the brass into the decapping die and I'd see that little pin pop up and I would just leave it as is and just come up here and go and give it a quick tap. Uh, just enough to force the pin back down and then pop the primer out. And uh, it worked quite well, actually. A um, couple hundred rounds uh, of having to do that. But uh, it doesn't take a lot of force, just enough to finish knocking it out. Um, and then on to my merry way. Um, there is one other thing that uh, I did discover, and that is clean out the carrier. Um, so as I was decapping all this brass, pop that out. I also discovered that, uh, and something I should have been paying attention to a bit more, is just how much priming compound residue builds up underneath this shell plate from the decapping process. Uh, there we go. We'll pull the plate out of here. Now, I just cleaned this before the video, so you won't get to see how bad it really was, but you will. I will show you the aftermath here. Um, as you're decapping these things, the uh, semi-burnt or unburnt uh, priming compound comes out of the bottom. Uh, you know, if you get anvil separation or anything, it gets even worse. But it builds up really, really bad right here in the lip of the ram. And it also starts building up down the uh, ejection chute port, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't know if you can see it very well on the video, but this actually has uh, Allen flats in it for the Allen wrench for complete disassembly. And I'll take the wrench and drop it in there and show you. So, yeah. Um, there was... Just from that, what I've got done, like I said, it's probably twelve to fifteen hundred rounds. There was enough buildup in here that occasionally primers would get caught in the bottom of this. And as you're cycling the the press and the shell plates moving around, loose primers would get stuck and they'd get picked up and they'd start 
cycling underneath the shell plate and causing the shell plate to jam up. And uh, you might not be able to see it very well, but there are some rings that are scored in the underside now around here from primers getting caught. Um, and it would cause this thing to not fully index during operation. Now something to keep in mind, uh, it is a little difficult when this thing comes out of, when this thing goes out of battery, but there are two ways that you can get it to go back into battery. Um, as you can see, when I bring this down, it's out of battery. It, it doesn't want to come down there and the alignment pin's not coming out. Now, the easiest way that I've found to get it back into battery is actually to short stroke it. Operate the carrier just a little bit and just short stroke the carrier until it partially rotates around until it's realigned. Uh, the other option is to actually spin the plate counterclockwise. The re, um, my, my first thought was actually to spin it forward, uh, clockwise, to get it to advance to the next station. Um, the problem, though, is the center axle that the shell plate is attached to is threaded opposite. So to keep the shell plate in place, you have to spin it counterclockwise for it to tighten up. The axle spins clockwise, so the shell plate spins counterclockwise. If you spin the shell plate clockwise, you can end up inadvertently loosening it up. And as you operate the press, it will cause it to loosen up more and more until it pops off. I did that once uh, before I realized what I was doing. So uh, best option, short stroke the, the press. And it, as you can see, I can do it intentionally until it lines up uh, with the pin again. Um, now, as for the, uh, the residue buildup underneath uh, from that priming compound, it gets pretty nasty, um, especially when you start getting anvil separations of the spent primers. A lot of the compound just builds up on the inside. The quick and easy way I found to clean it uh, take the decapping tube off, uh, take a microfiber cloth, put it down at the bottom of the ram, and then spray down the carrier uh, with the plate removed with some polymer safe gun cleaning spray. Uh, it'll, eat that, it'll eat the priming compound right out of there and it flushes it right down the bottom of the ram and, and out the bottom and it'll clean the priming compound out of the center as well. Um, the reason, you know, specifically the polymer safe, which means it won't hurt the plastic on the carrier. Um, and as you can see from the gunge, this is uh, liquefied priming compound that came out of there. Uh, it was pretty bad. So, um, I think uh, that's it. Oh, wait, I do have one more um, trick or modification that I ran across and actually ran across this today. There is another YouTube video that I ran across with a modification to the safety prime and it requires a screw. Uh, this is one of the quarter 20 screws that was used for the hold down clamp. Um, and it is apparently an issue with the, the little Pez dispenser on the safety prime that sometimes they don't always uh, get the primers lined up properly with the primer seating mechanism. Sorry. And uh, sometimes it'll just you go to operate it and it will spit the primer out and just pot it'll either be um, crooked in the in the pocket or it'll just pop it right out and shoot it wherever 
and it turns out that it is part of, let's see if I can get this out of here, problem is that, well, it'll take me a bit of effort to get this out. I'll pop that out. There we go. So it turns out the problem is actually this little um, pusher mechanism. Now this little pusher mechanism uh, sits in the little Pez dispenser like so, and it's what takes the primer and feeds it forward to get pushed down by the plunger, which I dropped part of. So, and the fix actually has to do with this little spring arm right here. Um, it stock, it doesn't have enough tension, so this thing wiggles around. So what the fix was, you take this quarter 20 screw, put it inside the gap of this spring to spread those apart, and then take this piece right here, drop it in boiling water for about 10 minutes and then take it out and let it cool off. Uh, what you're doing is you are reforming this plastic spring by opening it up and allow it and giving it a little more tension. And what the end result of that is, I'll put this back in here and lock that into place. Do that little axle hole. Oh, no, I got it backwards. Pardon me. Apologize for that. So now that it's back in place, what this does is it provides more pressure on the side when it's in here, and it actually pushes that hook into alignment. So it actually rides right down the side and keeps it in alignment with the plunger. And uh, I think it actually operates a little bit smoother now as well because of that tension. Before, uh, instead of operating in, here, in this manner, it would sometimes slip out a little bit off the side. So that was the modification I found. Um, I think I may have a link still to the guy's video. Um, strangely enough, he said that that recommend that modification recommendation came from Lee, so that would be interesting if it did. Um, hopefully, that will be something that they correct in their next production run. Change the uh, the angle of that little spring arm in the mold when they make it. So that's it for this update.